It's a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz and welcome is what I'm going to say. I'm your host Amir Naik and today we're talking a lot about bikes and yeah, somewhere down the line, no, it's actually only going to be bikes. So let's kickstart things with, well, a comparison between two middleweight off-roading capable bikes actually. One is the BMW F850S and the other is the Tiger 800. Now, in fact, the Tiger 800 has been quite a favorite of ours. It has won all the battles we've put it into. But what about the BMW? It has something special, doesn't it? That Well, Pritam Bora was uh, out there with both the bikes to find out who was the winner. Two middleweight adventure bikes. Both promising a level of capability to cover long distances comfortably. And if a two-wheeled adventure is just what you're looking for, both these bikes have got it all. The more popular choice is the Triumph Tiger 800, but it's been around for a while now. And now, its unmatched fan following is challenged by the middleweight German, the BMW F850GS. They are big, burly and tall. And if it's one thing both bikes have dollops of, it's presence. The GS has top-notch build quality. Every small surface, every small component feels built to last. And in the rally colors of our test bike with the gold rims, the 850 GS looks even more appealing. The TFT instrument panels is an optional extra, as are the LED headlights on the BMW. And the Pro variant also adds a third Enduro Pro riding mode, in addition to road and rain. The BMW's menu controls aren't very intuitive and it takes some time getting used to controlling the settings. But it also gets smartphone connectivity, as well as an emergency call option. The BMW certainly is a fresh change from the quite commonly seen Tiger. But then, the Tiger still looks handsome. Although its overall silhouette hasn't changed much over the last two generations. But now, the Tiger gets bold graphics and a standard full-color TFT instrument panel with five riding modes. Road, Rain, Sport, Off-Road and Off-Road Pro. Each offering further customization and different choices of throttle maps, ABS and traction control settings. And the joystick control on the Tiger's menu is easy to use and very intuitive. Now both these bikes are adventure touring motorcycles. 80% of owners will use them for long distance touring. Both these bikes more or less equally balanced. Of course, uh, the Tiger has an advantage if you're going long distance riding because of this tall windshield. It offers more wind protection. So if you're going hundreds of kilometers in a day, this one will tie out less than the GS. The GS, of course, is a smaller windshield, so it offers less wind protection than a Tiger. You can, of course, put a aftermarket windshield, slightly taller windshield, to give you more wind protection. But right now in stock form, it's a Tiger which offers more protection. Now, uh, in terms of wheels, both these bikes have similar size wheels, 21-inch front, 17-inch rear, spoked wheels to do some sort of off-roading. You can quite capably do a lot of off-roading on this. But it's the GS which is the advantage because this comes with standard tubeless tires, these ones. While the Tiger comes with tube tires. Now the advantage is if you have a puncture in the back of beyond a place like this, to repair a flat on the Tiger, you'll have to take off the wheel, take off the tire, take off the tube, repair the tube or maybe even change the tube. While the GS, all you need is a tubeless repair kit and you can very easily repair the puncture. Now, in terms of protection, the Tiger comes with a standard aluminum sump guard. So, if you're going over rocky terrain, that aluminum engine bash plate will certainly offer a lot more protection than the one on the GS, which is just a plastic sump guard. 
Now, if you're going over rocky terrain, rocky roads, no roads, uh, the GS has less protection on the engine because of the plastic bash plate down below. And uh, in terms of electronics, this one, of course, comes with an optional pro package, which offers an additional fort riding mode. It gets rain, road, dynamic, which is like a sport mode. And of course, on an enduro pro mode, which offers uh, limited wheel spin and uh, disables ABS at the rear wheel, but on the front wheel, it offers some kind of ABS. The Tiger, however, comes, the XEX comes with five riding modes, rain, road, sport, off-road, which offers limited wheel spin, so you can slide, but if things go out of control, then the electronics will ensure you don't crash. And an off-road pro mode for more experienced riders, which offers complete, complete independence for your riding skills. The 853cc parallel twin engine of the BMW has more pulling power in low and mid revs. And it's immediately apparent that it's the GS which is eager to go. But once you're up to cruising speeds, the difference isn't noticeable. The Triumph offers smoother acceleration and a sportier soundtrack from its triple cylinder engine. And that tall windshield also makes it easier on the Tiger on the highway. After a couple of hours, the BMW shorter windshield tires you out sooner because of the wind blast. At highway speeds, it's the Tiger which has better punch, higher in the revs. And that makes it a more engaging highway companion. And when the road ends, both bikes seem evenly matched. The low grunt from the BMW's engine makes it easier to tackle off-road terrain. But that doesn't mean the Tiger is any less capable. In fact, it's the Tiger which feels marginally more planted when you're battling loose terrain, thanks to the fully adjustable WP front suspension. The Tiger 800, of course, uh, offers a very wholesome package. It's got a three-cylinder engine, very smooth, very refined, and it's meant to cover long distances very, very easily. No wonder it's one of the most popular bikes in this segment right now. But the BMW also has quite a few tricks up its sleeve. Uh, this one gets semi-active suspension, which you can adjust on the fly, which the Tiger doesn't get. And of course, uh, the ride quality on the BMW is better when you're riding on road or over broken roads. And uh, also the BMW biggest advantage is of course the tubeless tires and the Enduro Pro mode which is an optional accessory offers full adjustability across your traction control across ABS and across the throttle map which the Tiger lacks of course if you upgrade to the XCA it gets a fully programmable rider mode but in the XCX that adjustability is not offered overall I think it's a very close call which one to pick over the other but the Tiger, if you want one bike to do it all for you, the triple cylinder engine offers almost like a sport bike performance. But the BMW offers more torque, so it's more eager. With less throttle input, this one feels more eager to go. But for one bike, if you need just one bike to do everything for you, I'll pick the Tiger. The Triumph Tiger 800 XCX is priced at 14 lakh rupees. And at that price, you get more equipment and features than the base 850GS. The 850GS range starts at just under 13 lakh rupees. But if you opt for the Pro variant, together with the full color instrument panel and rally color option, the price tag goes up to over 15 lakh rupees. At that price, you also get the top spec Tiger 800XCA with six riding modes heated seat and grips, standard auxiliary lights, and full LED lighting. The BMW F850GS is a very capable adventure tourer and it's well specced and looks fresh. But the Tiger will also be easy to live with in terms of maintenance and serviceability. Overall, it's still the Triumph Tiger which continues to be our pick in the middleweight adventure segment. If you're not looking for something exclusive and with a slightly different flavor.
Well, this battle too was won by the Tiger 800. But now let's move on to a new bike, which is, uh, well, this battle too was won by the 800. And uh, well, it's kind of your choice, your go-to choice for a bike, isn't it now? Uh, let's move on to our next story, which is all about a new bike from Harley Davidson. It's called the 48 Special. Prices start close to 11 lakh rupees and yes, it's an all new 1200cc Milwaukee engine. How does it do? Well, find out. Meet the 48 Special. Harley Davidson India's first new model this year. It's not an all new model, but it has fresh appeal with eye-catching custom paint schemes and fuel tank graphics inspired by Harleys from the 1970s. And it's a striking motorcycle to look at, complemented by gleaming chrome and blacked out bits. And then there's the tall new handlebar, which gives it a retro chopper appeal. The 48 Special certainly plays the part of being the star of a classic Hollywood motorcycle blockbuster. Now, if you've been brought up on Hollywood movies, long open highways, cruiser motorcycles on sweeping highways, then maybe you don't need to look any further than a Harley Davidson. And if you want to look cool on a motorcycle, maybe you don't need to look further than the new Harley Davidson 48 Special. Whatever your age, whatever your height, whatever your build, if you want to up your cool cushion in your personality, this one will certainly go a long way in making your Hollywood dreams come true. Well, almost. Any angle you look at it, whatever your age, whatever your size and build, the Harley Davidson 48 Special is definitely a head turner. The big 1200cc air-cooled V-twin engine has enough performance to keep you satisfied. Dashing from stoplight to stoplight or out for an early morning cruise on the weekend, the five-speed gearbox is chunky, but the ratios are well sorted to give you decent pulling power. It's instantly likable. The combination of the classic V-twin rumble with that easy rider riding position and handling is decent too, with the bike remaining planted around the corner but lean angles limited by the foot pegs if you're going to get a little adventurous. The 48 Special is powered by a 1200cc air-cooled V-twin engine. Makes about 97 meter meters of torque at 3500 RPM. Got enough pull to keep you entertained and you can cruise comfortably at around 120 km per hour. But what takes the pleasure out is its small, puny fuel tank. You'll need to frequently fuel fuel if you're in the mood for a long ride. Of course, you look cool out for a coffee run on a Sunday morning ride. But then, if you're in the mood for a daily commute on this bike, there's a price to be paid for it. For starters, if you're stuck in bumper to bumper traffic, that heat from that big V-twin will make things slightly uncomfortable. And then, as long as the stomach is smooth, it's absolutely fine. But show it a uh, little uneven stretch, the limited suspension travel makes it a little uncomfortable on your backside. But overall, it's still a cool looking motorcycle, isn't it? But the appeal of uber cool looks has a limited shelf life when you have to cover more than the short dash within the neighborhood. The heat from the air-cooled engine will overshadow the good looks and the stiff suspension will make you want to take a break more often than you'd want to. But if you're the kind of guy who wants to make a statement with your ride and nothing short of an all-American V-twin cruiser will do, by all means, take a good look at the 48 Special. You may end up bringing it home. Just keep in mind that it may start losing its appeal soon, more so if you're looking to cover long distances and over not so smooth tarmac. There's something amazing about Harley Davidson's, isn't it? And you really 
uh, it, it's all about that rumble in that engine and well you see one glide through you always enjoy watching it well let's take a break and on the other side a lot more to come so stay tuned Welcome back to CNB Bazaar Buzz and as I promised this is going to be an an episode about bikes only. So you've already seen the first two in the segment. Now it's time for something a little different. Something that we've always dreamt of sitting at our offices on our laptops and looking at places to travel. And most of the time we're thinking about which bike I can take to this mountainous terrain. Well, Samir Contractor actually got a chance to do that and uh, he went to Bhutan with TVS Motor Company riding their all new Apache. So here's what he had to see. The TVS Apache motorcycle range has grown exponentially in a span of over a decade. With over 3 million Apaches globally, the motorcycles have found a fan base beyond borders. So it was only time that the Apache owners were in for an international ride. And what better destination than the picturesque Himalayan Kingdom of Bhutan? Well, that's a beautiful view, isn't it? Well, we are in the land of the Thunder Dragon, Bhutan, and we are with the Apache owners group. Well, it's a special ride for TVS Apache riders, uh, very specifically in Bhutan, and 15 customers from India have joined us on this expedition. Well, we are riding the Apache 204V and the RR310 on this very special ride. And today's objective is to explore a lot of Thimpu, the capital of Bhutan. Astride the Apache RTI 204V, our first stop is the Buddha Dor Denma Temple with the Shakyamuni Buddha statue overlooking the city. Having spent time learning about the country and the temple, it's now time to explore the city. The next day, it's time to set out to cover some distance from Thimpu to Punaka via the Dochula Pass. The well paved roads are a treat on the Apache RTR 200. The bike is an excellent companion both within city limits and out on the twisty mountain roads. The 20 BHP 200cc engine is brilliant and the Apache's agility is impeccable. The Apache owners group's first international ride has nearly the complete TVS Apache lineup right from the RTR 160 to the RR310. And it's a motley bunch of motorcyclists from all over India sharing their stories about motorcycles and their love for travel. So as a female rider, यहाँ पे एक अलग ही सब appreciate करते हैं जब पूरे group में मैं अकेली हूँ appreciate in the sense कि guys तो appreciate कर ही रहे हैं वो तो अलग ही बात है लड़कियाँ भी appreciate करती हैं और जहाँ जैसे कि हम जिस जिस जगह पे जा रहे हैं ladies एक female rider को देखके जो salute कर रही है या अब इतने दूर से आए हो अलग ही feeling है मतलब I can't express those in words. It's really, really very amazing. A couple of friends uh, who had told me that beautiful Bhutan will be a very good, beautiful place. But, uh, you know, after coming here, we, I was much more uh, surprised. Uh, we, are, of course, uh, we have a very cold climate here, but uh, we are not able to uh, customize here. But then again, uh, you know, that is the kind of uh, thrill that we have while riding in the cold temperature. That is the kind of adventure that we are having here. And it's very good fun riding with along the, all the co-riders. I'm having a great time here. It's day three of the ride to Bhutan and we are moving from uh, Punaka to Phobjika. It's about a 90 km ride and today I am riding the Apache RR310. It's the flagship Apache and it completes a year since its launch. And I have to tell you, it's such a lovely motorcycle to ride. I mean, we've been taking it around the twisties. Uh, there's enough power. The mid, it has a very strong mid-range and it's one of the more versatile motorcycles in its segment. The RR310 is impressive and despite its sport leanings, it's agile and it's quite easy to ride for long hours despite the dedicated riding posture. The well-tuned suspension gobbles up bad roads with ease which makes the bike extremely practical, especially for Indian roads. 
Having survived sub-zero temperatures overnight, it's time for the last leg of the journey. From Pope Jika to Paro, and nothing beats the feeling of riding in a convoy of motorcycles. In this case, the sight of this convoy of TVS Apaches across mountain roads certainly is one of the highlights of the ride. It's a ride without any worries, with the TVS crew always around to help in case it's needed. We don't want to, you know, get into get get involved into you know, arrangements for their stay or medical backup or technical backup. So in EOG, we provide you know proper mechanical mechanic support. We provide medical support. So in case anything is happening to your bike, there is you know team which can take care of your bike, right. and that is what we do. So every day there is a bike check which happens so that your bike is ready to go and do to go and conquer the terrain. It's day five of the AOG ride to Bhutan, and as a final day here, we decided to give the motorcycle some rest in favor of some hiking. Well, behind me is the Taksang Monastery or the Tiger's Nest, as it's popularly known, and we decided to hike for three hours all the way up here. Well, it wasn't easy. Well, it wasn't uh, fun at all. But for a view like this, it's completely worth it. Scenic views and friendly faces all around Bhutan leave you with a lot of fond memories and of a people who are humble. The best way to explore Bhutan is on a motorcycle and we can count ourselves among those fortunate few to have ticked it off the bucket list. Until the next visit. Well, that was quite a sight, wasn't it? Uh, looking at the mountains and riding around the countryside. Well, that's it for this show and hope you enjoyed that. Do give us your feedback and uh, log on to www.currentbike.com or we are on all the social handles right from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and even on YouTube. So do come there and give us your feedback. Well, as always, the safety message has to end this episode. So always wear your seatbelts and always, always wear your helmets while riding. Until next time. Bye -bye.